Well, good day, everyone. It is so good to be outside here coming to you uh, from this beautiful space to talk to you today about communion as we really celebrate and think about the why behind what it is that we do when we celebrate this very important and special meal. Some of you may have heard it called the Lord's Supper. Some of you may have heard it called um, coming around the table. Some of you may have, may have heard it called communion. And in all of those instances, what we're talking about is the very same thing, this meal of remembrance that Jesus instituted himself with his disciples. And when we think about that actual story, it's quite a, um, a pressure-filled situation. He, they've been with, the disciples have been with Jesus for the last three years, and they've come together to this pivotal moment when Jesus himself knows that he's going to be going to the cross. He's going to be sacrificing his life for the life of all humanity. And so in this moment, Jesus chooses this moment to institute this meal, which brings so much life to us. And we're going to explore today why and how that is the case. I want to read to you from Luke chapter 22, starting at verse 14. And it says this, when the hour came, he reclined at the table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I've earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. He took a cup and when he had given thanks, he said, take this and divide it amongst yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But behold, the hand of him who betrays me is with me on this table. For the Son of Man goes as it has been determined, but woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. They began to question one another, which of them it could be who was going to do this. This emotionally charged time around a table, and you'll notice there right at the beginning that the, that the Bible says that Jesus reclined with his disciples at the table. And of course, this is something in the ancient Near East in Bible times that we weren't sitting at a table with a table and chairs and knives and forks like you or I would be accustomed to, but a meal was done reclining on a low table, a table probably about this height with cushions all around and the people would lie down, rec literally recline back and rest on their elbow to eat. That sounds like a fun way to eat food. Uh, to me, I don't know if it feels like a, a, a great way for you to eat. Maybe a little bit uncomfortable and not really what you're used to. But the same thing is true. Those who you share a meal with, you become bonded with. The ones that we share um, times around food with, we become we become connected to in deeper and deeper ways. Indeed, we become like those we recline with. In the Bible times, this was exactly true, to share a sense of um, connection, to share a sense of unity, to come together and seek mutual understanding and love and hospitality and welcome and belonging. You would eat a meal together and meals often went on over hours and hours. There was no such thing as fast food in the Bible. They were the originators of the slow food movement, which was all about taking your time, enjoying everything that you were sitting down to eat and enjoying the people that you were with. In Bible times, you became like those you reclined with. So who were you reclining with? That's the question for us today. Who are we reclining with in our lives? And communion offers us a beautiful opportunity, an invitation to more and more recline with Jesus. I love this image here because Jesus isn't standing far off separate to his disciples. In this communion story, Jesus actually shows us the model of his ministry, which is he's one among sitting at the table with his disciples. Verse 14 says, when the hour came, he reclined at the table and the apostles with him. They sat together. This is Jesus' model of ministry as one among, not one separate or above. He reclined with them because he knew that for the disciples, they were going to become like 
the one that they recline with. He says in verse 15, I've earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I, I suffer. And now this is fascinating to me. And this is something that we step into when we share communion together. We step into a meal with history. Jesus calls this meal the Passover meal. He'd already told them to prepare the Passover um, up in this upper room because he knew he was going to set this table for them before he went. He says, I've earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. And now, of course, their minds go back to Egypt. Of course, their minds go back to the story of Exodus. Of course, their minds go back to the time when the angel of death came across all of Egypt and those who had baked their flatbread and had posted the the blood of the lamb upon their doorposts, the angel of the Lord passed by that house and they celebrated Passover because he passed over them every single year from then until now as we're reading this passage. And yet Jesus steps them into this Passover, but with a difference. Because whilst we step into history and we take it to take a look in the rear vision mirror of our own story, this meal not only focuses us on what's behind, but more than anything focuses us on what's ahead. And so we look to not only what's gone before, we look to not only the miracles of God in the, in the past and look, 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 uh, we not only look to his deliverance that's happened in the past, but we also look to the future and I'll show you why. Jesus uh, took a cup in verse 17 says, take this divided amongst yourselves, for I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. So as much as this communion meal is about what God has done in the past, as much as this meal is about what his saving acts and the way he brought the people out of Egypt into the promised land and remembering his acts in, of history, this is also about looking forward. And Jesus says to his disciples, I will not share this meal again. This is Jesus' last meal with his people until the kingdom of God comes again. So you and I look with expectation. We wait with bated breath to see that day when Jesus will come again and we will be eating our next meal with him. We will be sharing this meal together with Jesus the next time he eats it. That is something that's incredible to think about, to think that in this moment, we now have this meal to remember Jesus by, to sustain us, to hold us, to anchor us to his sacrifice until he comes again. And so we eat and drink in remembrance of history, but we also eat and drink in anticipation of what's ahead. And so Jesus said here, he takes this cup. And when he had given thanks, he said, take it and divide it amongst yourselves. He takes a cup because he knows that this is a symbol of his blood. He took bread and when he'd given it to them, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is given to you and do this in remembrance of me. You know, Christianity does not know anything out apart from the sacrifice of Jesus. If the sacrifice of Jesus isn't connected to our faith, it's not really our faith at all. Our, our very faith hinges on this moment when we would remember the sacrifice of Jesus because it shows us the weight and the depth of our sin. It shows us how far we've fallen. It shows us that indeed the perfect lamb, the sinless, spotless lamb had to die to provide a gift to cover over our sin. And yet as we do that, when we come around the table, when we recline with him at the table and we break bread, we remember that his body was broken. When we take the cup, we remember that his blood was spilt. And it's not about the Passover because this is what Jesus says here. This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. The new covenant in my blood. So Jesus says, here's the Passover here, but now I'm going to institute something new. In days gone by, you've known you were close to me by the laws that you kept and by the cleanness of your hands and by the, pure, the purity of your heart. 
under the new covenant, I'm going to take that heart of stone and replace it with a heart of flesh. Under the new covenant, it's not going to be about your sacrifice of the lamb, but I will be the lamb that is sacrificed for you. Under the new covenant, we don't just look back to God's saving acts in the past, but we strain our eyes forward to the kingdom that is coming and the kingdom that is indeed here this very moment and breaking into our existence this very day. And so we remember, but we also celebrate what is ahead and then there's this part of this scripture which if i was writing the bible i would have left this out because for me it doesn't really feel like it's in keeping or in it doesn't really feel like it flows with the rest of the story he says here um this cup that is poured out for you is a new covenant in my blood but then verse 21 says but behold the hand of him who betrays me is with me on the table this is incredible this would as a leader you know this would this has certainly got to mess with your sense of moment here you are in this moment the last meal with your disciples i've earnestly desired to eat this with you before i go and suffer and yet even in this holy moment even in this time there is the hand of a betrayer who's joined them at the table judas was there at the table and you know what this shows me it shows me that no matter what is going on, communion should not be removed from our daily life. Communion is not something, reclining at the table with Jesus isn't something we do when everything is perfect. We recline with Jesus at the table in the midst of pain, in the midst of brokenness, in the midst of betrayal. Jesus even invited the betrayer to eat at the table with them. So I want you to get rid of that idea in your head that I'm not holy enough, I'm not good enough, things aren't right in my world right now. If you come and recline at the table and your desire is to meet with Jesus and to remember his sacrifice in the past and strain your eyes forward to the kingdom that is coming, if your intention and desire is to recline at the table with Jesus because you want to become like the one you recline with, no matter what is going on, the bread and the cup are for you. We're a people of the open table. And what that means is that the alien, the foreigner, the stranger, the broken, the misfit are all welcome at this table because they were welcome at Jesus' table. They were reclining with him at Jesus' table. And so a couple of thoughts before we eat and drink together. The first one is as we come to celebrate and remember this meal today, I want to encourage you to find strength in this meal. I want, I, want you to, I want to encourage you for this meal to strengthen you. Now, there's nothing special about these elements. This is, this is bread that's been baked by human hands. This is, this, is a, this is grape juice that's been crushed and poured out by human hands. This is not, um, this is not some kind of um, divine... Um, divinely imputed with special magical powers. No, it's a symbolic meal, but with very, very, very deep implications, with implications of grace that, that, that are communicated spirit to spirit by Jesus' spirit to ours. And so I want to encourage you today as we eat, find strength in this meal. Secondly, when we eat and drink, we can eat and drink and toast to a new day. Because every time we eat and drink, we remind ourselves of the new covenant that we're under. We remind ourselves that Jesus isn't going to hold our sins against us, but that we eat and drink to our freedom. And so wherever it is that you're at today, I want to encourage you to, to find strength in this, but also to find a new day. You can eat and drink with Jesus, reclining with him at the table, knowing that he does not count his, your sins against you, but he separated them from you as far as the east is from the west. And then thirdly and finally, as we break this bread and drink this cup together, I, want, I, I would want to encourage you and invite you to find life. Find life in this deep place of communion around the table today. Because what's beautiful is that Jesus has invited you He's reclining at the table and he's invited you to come, you personally. 
He's invited you to remember all that's been his faithfulness to you in the past, to remember all that's ahead, the the joy and the miracles and the life that's coming down the line, the bigger story that you can find yourself in and the life that is there in the moment, reclining at the table with Jesus because he's holding out now until he comes again to eat this meal with us in the flesh. When we're reunited with him in the new heavens and the new earth as we look forward to that day and we know that there's going to be a great feast, a great celebration as we connect together and celebrate Jesus and all that he has done to put the world right again. So I'm going to pray and then I'd invite you to eat and drink with me. I'd invite you to, um, if you're not prepared right now, quickly go and find some bread, find some juice, find something that you can celebrate with today. Now, these aren't throwaway items. Sometimes I feel like we get a little bit guilty of, um, of treating these emblems with a, with, with a little bit too much familiarity because in this moment we can, we can stop and we can remember the history that we've stepped into but also the great future that is ahead of us together. And we should make this moment as, um, as, as beautiful and special as we can, as often as we can. Because of course the Passover was something that happened once a year, but, but communion is something that, that, um, that Jesus said, I'd love you to do it every single time you meet. So the idea is whenever you get together with the people of God, whenever you're sitting around a meal, that can be a time to also recline with him. So Father, we thank you today that you've set the table for us and that your desire is that as we recline with you, we would begin to become more and more like you. We do become like those we recline with. And so today we want to take up your invitation, Jesus, to recline with you. We thank you for the bread. We thank you for the cup. We thank you for the sacrifice that this represents and the strength that it is to our spirit. And so today, as we eat and drink, we do this in remembrance of you, Jesus. And we look ahead to your coming kingdom and to the way that the new heavens and the new earth are breaking into our world and the bigger story that we're a part of in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's let's eat together, everyone. Let's break the bread and and likewise we take the cup which is uh, been poured out for the forgiveness of our sins. Let's drink together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of Jesus. And today we reorientate ourselves and we anchor ourselves to his sacrifice, to his death and to his resurrection until he comes again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.